<laughs> Welcome to Caroline and Rashi. I am usually very sad that Rashi's not here, but today I am so excited <laughs> because I called in one of the best, my sister, Lexi Collins, to fill in for Rashi today. So excited to be here. I absolutely love watching you and Rashi. You guys are great. I tune in all the time. So to be here and be a part of the show is quite the honor. Right? She actually <laughs> is a fan of the show, no lie. I can always count on you, mom, Connor, who's behind the scenes, my boyfriend and my dad, to tune in or binge watch Caroline oh, and Rashi. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's an honor to have a real fan of the show here. I know. I, I wish Rashi was here because she's great. I love hanging out with Rashi when I'm in town, but yeah. glad I can uh, take over <laughs> for today. And Coco's in the newsroom. You love oh, Coco. Oh, Coco is awesome. Coco Dominguez. Oh yeah, she's met you several times. Oh yeah, Coco's she's stories so are always super fun. And no one's gonna know who's talking today though, because we sound so much alike. Yeah, our own mother can't tell our voices apart. I answered your phone this morning, and she didn't even. She totally <laughs> thought it was you. I didn't even say. I've talked to your boyfriend on the phone for like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Just him having no idea. I know that it wasn't you. Yep, it is. But like. You have to kind of tweak some of the words, huh? Like to make them sound more newsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our whole lives, Caroline has been talking, prepping for her news career. Even in the drive through at McDonald's, <laughs> she would put on her news anchor voice. <laughs> order. I still feel like I do that. That's why Connor's you laughing over there. You do. Because I'm like, <clears throat> I'll have a tall pumpkin spice latte. I was just born to do this job. <laughs> yeah. Well, my sister is also in the... I don't know. I don't feel like my job is an entertainment field, but it's like a on-camera career, uh -huh. a big public persona career. And you actually have that as well because oh. of what you decided to go into. But before we get into that, I wanted to just prove that she really is my sister. So we have some photos oh of us gosh. when we were little ah, before I explain who Lexi really is. Uh, Lexi lives in Los Angeles, but she comes to Houston a lot, which is fun. Uh -huh. So I'm so glad that you were here. I called her like an hour ago. I was like, can you fill in on Caroline and Rashi? I was on the treadmill an hour ago. Did you get any workout in? Three steps. Yeah. Three steps. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't think of it before I was driving in here. I'm like, oh. I well, know. mom like said it as a joke. I was like, oh, I have to find a fill in today. And mom was like, have Lexi do it. I'm like, you know what? Why not? So these are just some pictures of us when we were growing up and we were both we're five years apart, so Lexi's a lot younger than me, which is why she's a literal baby there, and I'm like a oh, little, a little our kid. Golfing. Yes, we both grew up golfing. We grew up on the golf course, and I feel like it was almost a good thing. I know that we always wish that we were closer in age than we actually are, because <laughs> five grades is a, a lot. But you were always so much better at everything than me, like dance and. No, I wasn't. Oh my gosh, you totally were, because you had well, me to teach you. Yeah, I was always above the other kids my age, skill-wise, because I had Caroline teaching me nonstop, tumbling, dancing. So you definitely put me ahead on a lot of things because you, you were like hard on me. Yeah, so I feel like if we were closer in age, that would have caused a big competitiveness between us. But because we're five years apart, uh. we never really, we competed with each other on the same dance teams because you were so far advanced, you got moved up to my yeah. level, but we never really competed against each right. other in pageants right. or it was perfect. in high school for like spots on the dance team or on the golf course. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm maybe the better golfer, but you have a great swing. You too. are definitely the better <laughs> I got golfer. you on one thing. That's about it. You are definitely the better golfer. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not bragging about that. It's just, I'm, thank goodness. There one, we are one on thing the, I on can the do golf better. Course. Yeah. So, this is just proof that this is my sister, Lexi. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this live show. <laughs> Wait, we used to, my mom used to dress us like so, look, I look like I'm ready to go on the news there. Literally. Yeah, I could literally Nothing's wear that changed. outfit on the news. And like your hair and my hair is how it's looking. I know, That's. I right was just now. thinking that. You yeah. had the curliest hair when you were little. Oh, I had a, like a big puffy hair. It was great. I know. So fun. Oh, I love this Aww. picture of us. It's so cute. You're so cute. Look how little you are. You're like Aww. my little baby doll. Anyway, so Lexi, you're a DJ in Hollywood. Yes, I am. You're also an actor, a working actor who uh -huh. books. You do a whole lot of things. You're super creative. I didn't really get any of the creativity mindset. So what's it like being a DJ 
in Los Angeles, a it's, female DJ, right. which is crazy. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of late nights. There it's you a are. Lot of, studio sessions till 7 a.m. Oh my goodness. It is. Because not only is she playing for big crowds and festivals of a thousand people plus, you also travel to DJ a lot. That's why you're in Houston and you're playing these like big venues, but you spend a lot of time in the studio creating. Absolutely, yeah. That's a big part of it. Um, creating the music that you're playing live. And so I'm going to have uh, some, some music coming out, which is exciting. That's but so exciting. Definitely. I So if we did live in the same city, uh -huh. I don't think that we could live together. No, absolutely not. Because <laughs> <laughs> our schedules are total opposite. I'm always, She's you know, starting work when I'm ending. DJ said. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I don't think it would work, but we could live, you know, in the same building. And For sure. That would be great. I love when you visit, though. I You can stay we as long as you want. Time. We have so much fun. But also on here was a snippet of a recent movie that my sister uh, just filmed, and it actually kind of, I mean, I'll brag about it. It, it blew up. It, it did. blew 100 yeah, million over, plus views. Yeah, almost 200 million downloads now. But it's kind of a unique, I never, until you booked this, and you're booking a lot of things like uh -huh. this, I never heard of this type of movie. This is right. new. It's a new format. It's a new technology. And in other countries, it's really taken off, and now mm -hmm. finally, it's really picking up traction here. Yeah, so can you it's, it's been about, it's been huge over in China for about five years now, and now it's gaining popularity in the US. It's actually vertical content. So it's a full length film shot vertically on your phone. So most people watch this on their, on their cell phones. You don't have to turn the phone sideways. You're just, it's shot yeah. up and down like a phone would be. And so it's, you literally just watch it on your phone, which I was like, whoa, that's so cool. And is. I didn't realize how popular they're very, And there's very a bunch popular. of different now there's studios or companies. 40 that different apps that yeah. host these, sh these movies. So what's the movie called that is out now that people so can watch? So I am in Breaking the Ice and you can stream it on real short. That's so cool. And it, it, I mean, literally the couple weeks I've talked about on this show, my friends were sending me text messages, screenshots, pictures, uh -huh. or they've seen it pop up on their social media Everyone ads. Everyone sees Oh it. my gosh, is that your sister? Tell them the funniest so the part funniest about this one. The funniest part is when I auditioned for this, the first line in the audition was, wake up, Caroline. I play the very bratty bully in the show. So I was like, when the character's name was Caroline and I had to yell at her, I was like, this is coming off way <laughs> too easy. <laughs> because, uh, so yeah, the main character's name was Caroline, which we thought was hilarious. Hilarious. And she says it with it. so much just you can just tell she's yelled at me a hundred times she's like Caroline like yeah it's just so aggressive I say it in real so life. aggressive so funny so you said to me though that when you play a role like this where you are the villain you're mm -hmm. the villain of the movie because you've booked a lot recently and you keep booking I'm the villain for some reason booking I'll audition for the nice girl and then they always call me back oh we actually want you to read for the mean girl Ugh. I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's blonde hair. No, <laughs> I'm like, there, I'm not this mean in real life. There were a couple instances, <laughs> maybe not with this particular film, but in the past on other shows and things that you've worked on, where you said you've legitimately felt bad. Oh, yeah. She felt bad having to be so oh, act yeah. and be mean to the other characters. That's I sad. Know. It, it's sad. Like Some of these lines are things that I would, they would never come out of I my know. mouth in real life, but... It, it's, you know, for the comedy and, and yeah, for the, the drama and for the drama. But yeah, I know I tend to always be the bully, which, hey, I'll take it. At You're, least I'm acting. And <laughs> Do you remember when you were in high school and you were on like a real teen talk show on TV uh -huh. as a regular? Yeah, was cool. I was. So I was a TV So you've host. basically done this before. Yeah. It was called, what was it called? TYS Teen Talk Show. Teen Talk Show. Talk to you. And it talk to you soon. soon.
Yeah, it was TTYS. And she'd be like, welcome back to TTYS. And it would air, literally. In they a filmed out of Pittsburgh. In, yeah. On the East Coast, it aired. So yeah. you were like basically almost hosting a show like this. Pretty much, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we have more to come, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I was like, we have a real person who works in the music industry in Hollywood here, so we have to kind of take it a little bit serious and talk about one of the biggest stories out of Hollywood. And you literally live in Hollywood. Lexi oh, yeah. lives in the heart of Hollywood and is around a lot of people in the music industry. Not this particular person that we're about to talk about, Thank but goodness. for real, I mean, seriously. Because I mean, I do get invited to a lot of big parties and events and stuff at celebrities' houses, but Luckily, this is not one that I've attended. Yeah, for real. But it's definitely somebody we grew up following, watching. Remember watching Making the Band? Yeah, and I remember running into Diddy in New York City. I remember that. With my grandpa. And my grandpa didn't know <laughs> what Diddy does. So he said, what did Diddy do? Yeah, what did Diddy do? <laughs> and we do? always laugh about that. But on a more serious note. Yeah, on a more serious note, I wanted to update you guys on what's happening here. So. I, of course, got my update from TMZ today, and Diddy was placed on suicide watch at the Metropolitan Detention Center in NYC. According to his people, his lawyer, he's not suicidal, but that's not what the authorities are saying. So his attorney says that the suicide watch directive was issued by MDC officials. It's merely a routine measure for new high-profile inmates. Diddy was arrested Monday night in Manhattan after a federal grand jury indicted him on charges of racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. When his homes were raided a couple months ago, that made huge news. Uh, Rashi and I talked the last uh, time I did this show about how many bottles of lubricant I... were seized, over a thousand, mm. and the stories and the videos that we've seen from other women coming forward with new lawsuits, video proof of literally what appears to be Diddy totally harming one of his ex-girlfriends, Cassie, I believe was her name. Um, it's unbelievable that this guy was such a huge deal, especially when you and I are growing up. Mm -hmm. Those MTV shows, his music, everything, and then for all this to come out, it's crazy. I That's crazy that it took this long to come out. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is something that's been going on for years. Years. Yeah. And for it to just be okay and no one speak up about it is wild. And it's like, we feel like we've made progress in Hollywood. I saw, you know, headlines today on entertainment news sites like is P. Diddy, hip hop's version of Harvey Weinstein, mm -hmm. who was, you know, that with all the actors yeah. and actresses and everything. So it is so crazy that we've been through so much already with when it comes to sexual harassments and other harassment cases mm -hmm. and misconduct cases. And then still we're here today with all this stuff coming out. I don't, it's it's nerve. It makes me nervous for you working in Hollywood and in the music industry and among all these people who are so successful. And it's like if you just let down your trust for one minute, what can happen? Mm hmm. It is scary. It's definitely wild out there and people do need to keep their guard up and, and be careful. Yeah, especially if you're young. I feel like it's easy to you're still young, young, but you have a good head on your shoulders. Yeah, and I you know, I've been there for so long that it's not, you know, anything new, but people who are more vulnerable and, yeah. and you, you know. want it so bad and you're like, Okay, I'm gonna trust this person, they're so successful mm -hmm. and then Terrible things can happen. So anyway, switching gears now, my sister and I have been watching Dancing with the Stars probably since you were in basically preschool. Oh, we I mean, this goes back years. Mm -hmm. We started watching this when we were kids. We would watch it with our whole family, including our grandparents. And now Lexi and I tuned in because we've talked about this with Rashi before on the show. Anna Delvey. Anna Delvey. The convicted con artist who spent time in jail for like laundering money and convincing people to give her money 
for you know, no reason. You know what I thought was hilarious when we were watching the show? They announced her as entrepreneur and art entrepreneur and fashion fashionista yeah, yeah something like that entrepreneur I'm and like, fashionista call it how it is i know i was like you me mean con i know oh my goodness i mean she literally has her ankle monitor on while she's dancing but she did redazzle it which looked great so i wanted to talk about it because immediately whenever they announced her and she walked out on stage didn't i say ooh nobody clapped uh -huh. i was like literally the crowd went somewhat silent uh -huh. in comparison to the other stars uh -huh. that we were watching. The other one on there was the famous rugby player, Ilona She was Meyer. great. She was so, she well, not a dancer. She but. is not a dancer. So the <laughs> fact that she is t living by her word, which is promoting body positivity and confidence for women mm -hmm. and getting out there and doing something she's completely uncomfortable in, Amazing. Mm -hmm. And so then Lexi's watching rugby videos and my sister's like, I can't even believe she did as good as she did, being that yeah. she's out there on the rugby field. Oh, but yeah. That was the other person in the vid in the pictures that I just showed you. But back to Anna Delvey, um, the crowd like went silent and then the judges the judge did her. called it out. Yes. Carrie Ann and Abba. Uh <laughs> she was like, we're here for dancing. We're judging you on dancing, not for what you did in your past. Mm -hmm. and, and she said that everyone needs to give her a chance and yeah because it's about dancing it's not about what everybody else's background is and i was like ooh like i'm glad she said something because it was obvious it was for people awkward. watching at home it was yeah. awkward it was definitely awkward and then anna spun it as like you know i'm here to get my second chance and hopefully uh -huh. i can change your opinions on me she acts like completely unfazed she's just like oh, i have an ankle monitor it's very interesting to watch her interview it is. it's very interesting and we were highly entertained very and okay but the best dancer so far is the bachelor the bachelor guy which i can't remember his name me neither but he, but was, he really was good. so good yes he can move those hips <laughs> <laughs> he really can so it was fun i feel like when rashi and i talked about this we were like well they clearly know what they're doing because we wouldn't be talking about dancing with the stars right had Anna Delvey right. not been on there. I haven't, we haven't kept watched up in years. with the past, I mean, yeah, years. Yeah. But now that Anna Delvey's on there, I'm like, oh, I got to totally. watch. I feel like in years past, you know, whenever TV was the main source of entertainment, mm -hmm. we always would tune in. There were a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers who would go on there. Mm -hmm. Heinz Ward won, so we were huge Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So, of course, we tuned in to watch him. But then we haven't watched in a really long time. But, you know, you put a convicted – criminal <laughs> on the show we're with an ankle watching. monitor and I guess we're here for it. We'll be right back. Okay, I had to put this story in here because Lexi and I grew up going not only to Disney World but all kinds of amusement parks with my dad. He was big on roller coasters and rides. I used to be so scared and they would force me on there, but now I absolutely love rides. So. Oh, wait, it didn't? We don't have the video for this? That's sad. Okay, well, we're working on it. So I'll tell you, we apparently don't have the video for this one. I, I don't know what's going on because she told me this story was a surprise. Well, we would always, okay, we have the video. So. A popular Midwest amusement park that Lexi and I used to go to growing up all the time, even into our adult life, wants to tilt your brain into new thrills with a unique coaster <gasps> opening next year. No Cedar way. Cedar Point Amusement Park in Sandusky, Ohio. When I tell you, we used to freaking love going here. Like we, It was like Dad. less than three hours away. We'd go, we'd stay, we'd do the water park, we'd do the coasters. Anyway, they are bringing this siren's curse. That to Ooh, its lineup in these um in 2025 absolutely i know so it basically <gasps> twists and turns and the park is building the ride the tallest fastest longest tilt coaster in north america this coaster will climb 160 feet then it will make a tilt move 90 degrees to change your view site down before streaming off down the track at 58 miles per hour Cedar Point says that there's no real danger from the tilt or this ride. They've tested it, and Cedar Point is known to always break world records. It's the roller coaster capital of the world, they say, 
and people do they really do travel to Sandusky Ohio which again is like a less than three hour drive from where we uh -huh. grew up and I mean a lot of people would have season passes to go to Cedar Point a lot of my friends who live there still go regularly oh, yeah it's right on Lake Erie and they have this one coaster remember the dragster I think it's called something different now but it's basically the same thing it's basically just blast off straight up, straight, up, straight, straight down, down and ride. So one of my memories at Cedar Point <laughs> was we took you on the corkscrew. <laughs> and didn't tell me? No, we was... told you. You knew. Did I? You puked. I did. Yeah, after you got off the ride. Oh, I must not have <laughs> traumatized me that bad because I do not remember. I can't remember if it, I think it was either in like some sort of bag or a garbage can, oh. but you walked over and puked. I felt so I was bad. So young too, probably. The one that you're thinking of was we were in Hershey uh -huh. Park. So Hershey, Pennsylvania. It has this great amusement park. You can go to Chocolate World it's and see so how all the chocolate's made, and they give you a little Hershey chocolate. The town is called Hershey, Hershey Pennsylvania. So then there is the amusement park, Hershey, Hershey World, which is a really nice amusement park as well. So we used to go there and <laughs> Lexi was like terrified to ride anything. And so we basically told Lexi, my dad was like, okay, we're just not gonna tell her that this roller coaster is called the Super Duper Looper and it goes <laughs> in one loop. We're just gonna tell her it's a kitty ride and we're all gonna go on it. So me, my mom, my dad, we take her in line, we're like, trying to like shield her from she's so little that, that it goes upside down <laughs> and we put you on the ride and guess what you loved it i loved it you were fine i absolutely loved it so thanks thanks dad thanks caroline that's hilarious <laughs> but now you ride everything i do i'm i'm a super crazy roller coaster person in fact i just went to six flags in california and that's i got right. stuck on a ride can't trust for a while. Six Flags roller coasters. I'm telling you. That's what she said. You said they break down. A I lot. feel like every time we do a news story on a ride breaking down or people being stuck or whatever, it's always Six Flags for some reason. Did you see in the storm that that was a big story recently? I think it was in a different country. Yeah, I, I can't even look because I do ride storm, a lot of rides. Storm, lightning, thunder, rain, and they're stuck up there on those swings. Um, oh my gosh, I can't. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you can't do those spinny rides. You you skip those. Oh, I, I can't. But really quick before we end the show, I know you love coming to Houston. You're from LA. What's like one of your favorite things about coming to H-Town? Oh, we were just at the Astros game last I night. I went to the Astros game last night. It was a blast. And I even got to meet the mascot. It was so fun. That is so fun. <laughs> but the food in this city is outstanding. And you're always sure to make us the yes. best reservations. It's all the best I try. Spots. I and, try. And she picks up my She's tab, really so that's nice, too. She's always surprised at our sushi here. It's sushi You wouldn't expect great. the sushi is really good. Well, I want to bring Connor in just before we say bye. Just wave to oh. the camera. <laughs> He's the one that got her here super quickly with no notice. Crouch down, say oh, bye. Bye. Well, thanks everyone. so much for watching, friends. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back next week with Rashi. See ya. Thanks, Lexi. Good Thank job. you.